All right, this is going to be a quick run through on uh, training and setting up uh, GraphTech uh, FC8000 cutter uh, for the first time. And for those of you who aren't familiar uh, too much with plotters, I'm going to kind of run you through the functions and getting uh, set up as far as uh, getting your uh, material aligned correctly, uh, the actual uh, blade set up and uh, go from there. So what you're going to see on this actual uh, plotter, it composes of your actual cutting head, uh, which is right here. And inside this actual, this is what's considered your actual blade holder. Um, you've got your blade holder, uh, and then you've got your actual blade that sits right in this top, I'm going to unscrew it. You're going to see on the graph text, uh, this is actually your blade, and it does have a spring on it, spring loaded. Okay, very sharp little blade, so definitely be careful. Uh, I'm going to take the actual bottom of the blade holder and insert the actual blade in there, and then I can go ahead and tighten the bottom back on. And with this, what you're going to see is you actually have your blue dial. Um, on your blue dial, you've got one crosshatch. Um, on your actual black blade holder, you have five crosshatches, okay? And this is actually how you're going to adjust your blade depth. Um, looking at it, you can barely see the blade sticking out. Right now, I do have it set uh, for cutting paint protection film. Basically, each notch of this uh, dial uh, going around your actual uh, blade holder uh, accounts for about a half a mil of thickness. Uh, so when you actually get your blade and set it up, what you really want to do is backspin it so you actually see the tip of the blade pretty much disappear. Now it's flush. Uh, I can barely, barely see the tip of the blade. Kind of flip it upside down, see where you're at, align your actual blue uh, hatch mark with the closest one on the uh, top of your black blade holder. And from there, for paint protection film, uh, for 3M Scotch Guard or for Venture Shield, what I'm actually going to do, I'm going to make one full revolution, so five hatch marks, and then I'm going to go actually at past and go to my sixth one, okay? And right there, that's adequate uh, blade depth for cutting paint protection film. All right. So the whole idea is you don't want your blade out too far. Uh, th the way that plotters work, you're actually uh, cutting not only on the depth of your blade, the downward force that it's pushing on the material, um, and then the actual speed the material's running through the plotter. If you have too much of your blade sticking through, uh, the problem is you actually, when this punctures and penetrates the actual material, you want the tip of this black ABS to be riding on the material almost to make smooth cuts so when it goes and makes a corner or anything like that, uh, you get nice clean cuts versus having that extra space where the material can actually uh, drag or get caught up. So I'm going to go ahead and put this back in. My actual uh, blade uh, um, or my actual cutting head. So you want to make sure it goes in the back and then drops all the way down. Okay, when that's all the way down, you'll actually see you've got this lip that rides over the top of the actual blade holder. I'm going to make sure all that's incorrectly. Tighten it. Just go ahead and thumb tighten it. And we're basically set as far as uh, the blade depth. So on the FC8000, you do have a cross-cutting blade, okay, which is located right here. You just want to make sure every now and then uh, you check the tightness on that. Uh, after some time of using the cross-cutting head, it can actually uh, start to come loose from a little vibration and stuff. So just always double-check that it's nice and tight. Um, what you will see, I've got the control panel here. And we actually have our media uh, lockdown lever, which is here. Okay, When this is back, I can go ahead and move my cutting head freely side to side, um, along with these are what are called your pinch rollers. Okay, And these file rollers down here, these are what are called your actual grit rollers. Uh, now, on the 64-inch version, which uh, I'm doing the demo on, you'll actually see that you have four separate pinch rollers. Okay. 
um, you're always going to use just two. Even when I cut 60 inch venture, I'm only using two. Um, especially, you can get by and use a, a middle one or even use four on uh, venture if you're cutting it with the cap sheet on. But if you're going to be removing the cap sheet, uh, you definitely just want to use two just because it can actually put indentations uh, on the actual top of the material uh, if you're running um, in the center of it. So um, on the back of the pinch rollers, what you will see, you actually have these lockdown levers. Okay, These lockdown levers um, are actually pressure settings. So being down is going to give you the highest force. Being up is going to be the lightest force. Uh, what you want to make sure that all of your actual uh, corresponding uh, pressure settings on all the actual grit rollers are the same. If one's in a low setting and one's in the high setting, it's going to cause your material to drift and not track properly. So I've got my other two pinch rollers all the way to the far left in the standby position. Okay, um, And they need to be in the standby position, otherwise uh, it's not going to read the material properly or probably give you an error on the actual uh, plotter itself when you go to scan the material. So we've gone over the actual depth of the blade setting. Uh, we've got all that set up. So let's go ahead and grab a roll of material. And we're going to load a 24-inch roll of 3M Scotchgard right now. So on the back side of the plotter, I'll just swing this out, you're actually going to see you've got your, uh, your media rollers. Okay, uh, These I've just got straddled in the widest position. I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to set my roll of film on the actual media rollers. And I've got my film, so it's going to basically feed off. Um, and I'm going to feed it under and get it aligned on the actual plotter. So let's go ahead, I'm going to roll this out, feed it under my actual grit rollers. Now what you're going to see, you've got one wide grit roller over to the far right. Then corresponding, you have smaller grit rollers going to the left all the way down your machine. So rule of thumb, you always want the right hand edge of your material to land somewhere on this wide grit roller. So this being a 24 inch roll, what you can see, if I'm going to move this over, I want the left edge to basically be covering to the edge of one of the smaller grit rollers. So when I move this over, if I go to the right, okay, looking back over here, I'm going to align it all the way to the farthest right point. But now, over on the left, what I've got is an actual overhang. So in this scenario, what it's telling me, I need to move my material left, okay? So I'm gonna move it, my left hand edge, over to the next grit roller on the left, grabbing the roll from the back, sliding it over, and right there, basically covering up to that edge, is pretty much where I want it. Now coming back over to the right, if I feed this back, you're going to see that it's only sitting on the wide grit roller, maybe about a half an inch. And that's okay. You just want to make sure that right hand edge lands somewhere on this wider first grit roller. So I'm going to go ahead, get this coming through, see where I'm at, and then I can go ahead and move my pinch rollers into place. And what I do to align my pinch rollers pretty much the edge of the material on the right or left hand side, okay, I'm going to line up with the outer edge of this brass, all right? So looking at where I'm at, I'm pretty good. Now the only thing is I want to go ahead, I want to make sure that my roll has back tension on it, so I'm going to feed it out a little more, and then I'm going to take my other hand, grab the roll in the back, okay, and actually put some back spin on it, okay? While holding the roll in the front, I'm holding that in place, and what I'm doing is putting tension on the material, so I know when I go ahead and release my right hand, I'm going to keep my left hand intact, and now I can go ahead and lock down my actual rollers, and when those are locked down, I know that I did everything as possible uh, that I could to actually get that material as true and straight in the machine, okay? Um, so when I locked my lever down, 
what I'm seeing on the control panel is roll one rear set, roll two rear set, and sheet. Okay, I'm going to use roll one rear set. You want to make sure that it's set to rear set. Uh, if it says front set, what it's actually doing, you actually have an eye on the front of this plotter, and when it's set on rear set, it's actually looking for this leading edge. If it was set on front set, it would actually scan your material and just start unwinding your material out of your plotter um, until it reached the end of uh, the roll. So you want to make sure that it says rear set. I'm going to go ahead and hit roll one rear set. And what it's doing now, it's going to scan my actual media, find the width, um, which is my Y axis. Okay, uh, It has no idea what size material I loaded on it. So I'm going to look, and after it scans it, it's telling me my Y axis is 23.2. Now where that's important is when I select my pattern to cut, the cutting area of my pattern needs to be less than 23.2. If it's more, it's going to actually start cutting, and as it gets out to this left edge, the blade is going to actually pick up and not cut if it's over 23.2. So my pattern needs to be, say, 23.1, 23.19, just not over 23.2. Okay. Now, I'll get into a little later <coughs> how you can actually adjust that. But what your plotter is actually doing, it's going to be cutting the actual width in between the grit rollers. Now, this was a 24-inch roll but it's only giving me 23.2 because it's cutting in between those rollers. Uh, generally, it's uh, considered you know, where the rollers are uh, on the outer edges, it's going to be discarded material um, anyways. So I've already got this set up um, as far as my uh, speed and my force, but I'm going to run through it for you guys. Uh, so you guys know how to actually change uh, and set up your conditions. So there's, for speed right now, I've got, uh, for 3M Scotchgard, I've got it set on 30, which is fairly fast. Uh, I recommend if you're running Venture Shield, you want to probably be at speed of around 20, uh, maybe even 15. Um, the reason is 3M actually has a paper carrier. Um, that paper carrier actually tracks very, very well because these grit rollers uh, dig into it and you can run it at a, at a higher speed. With Venture Shield, it has a synthetic liner, um, which it, the actual uh, grit rollers don't dig in as hard. So if you're running it at a higher speed, it can tend to shift and drift just a little more. So my speed is at 30 right now. My force, which is going to be the downward pressure that it applies on the actual cutting blade, is set at 26. Okay. When you're first setting up your plotter and your force, go easy, make a few test cuts, just a few simple shapes, circle, square, triangle, star, anything like that, um, and make sure that you're cutting you know, deep enough but not too deep that you're actually going into the liner too far. Uh, it's going to cause you to actually dull out your blade a little quicker, um, and there's really no reason for it. So to go in to my conditions, I'm going to go ahead and hit my condition button. And if this is your first time setting it up, when we hit our condition button, showing me condition number one. Okay, Corresponding number is one. Tool, don't worry about your speed and your force are what you're concerned about. Okay, Number three is going to be your speed. So if I actually want to change my speed and say I'm going to set this up for venture and I want to down the speed a little bit, I'm going to go ahead and hit the number three. It shows my different conditions. Okay, It's on condition one. My speed is 30. I can go ahead and use my down arrow and drop that down to 20. Okay, If I'm happy with that, I'm going to go ahead and hit enter going to bring me back and if I needed to change my force I can go ahead and change my force. Say it's my first time cutting a new material uh, I want to go easy and uh, make sure that I'm not cutting too deep or all the way through I'm going to go ahead and hit four I can go ahead and change my force then same way using my up and down arrows <coughs> and once that's set go ahead and hit enter all right still going to bring me back and to get out of this function to get back to the home screen I'm going to hit menu and you should see condition one or whatever condition number you want set 
where it's going to say ready. At this point in time, it's ready to cut. Okay. The nice thing about the GraphTech uh, plotters, you actually have eight different conditions per user, and you have two users. So you technically can have 16 different conditions set. Uh, makes it super quick for change out of uh, different media, um, and then you know, depending on the media thickness or anything else, I've even got extra blade holders. This blade uh, and this blade holder uh, is actually a different degree blade, um, and it's set uh, shallower, and this is actually for window film. So to change to window film, all I'm going to have to do is go ahead and I'm going to take my blade holder for paint protection film out, take my window film blade holder, put that in place, and then I can go ahead, go back to condition, and condition one I have set for paint protection film, so I'm going to go ahead and change that, and I'm going to hit condition one, and I'm going to go up to condition three, which I have set for window film. So you can see my window film settings, I've got my speed at 15 and my force at 9. So if I want to select condition 3, I'm going to go ahead and hit enter, go ahead and hit menu, and now I'm on condition 3, ready, and my force and blade settings and everything else are correct for change out. So let's go ahead and just change this back for paint protection film. putting my paint protection film blade holder back in, tightening that down, going to hit my condition, go back to one, and now I'm set condition one ready for paint protection film. All right. Now what's important too is when I go to cut my pattern, I want to make sure, especially if it's a longer pattern, say it's going to be for a bumper, I want to make sure that I scroll out my material and make sure that it's tracking properly. All right. So the easy way to do that, I can go ahead and hit my down button. And when I do that, I'm watching my X coordinate. Okay. My X coordinate is telling me how far it's scrolling out. Now by just holding the down arrow, it's going to scroll slowly. And what I'm looking for is that my alignment is staying true. My material is not drifting to the right or to the left. It's staying under my actual pinch rollers, and everything's tracking well. I'm out, say, 8 inches. To make it go fast, I'm going to go ahead and hold the down arrow and the fast button simultaneously. And say my pattern is 80 inches, I'm going to go ahead and scroll out that 80 inches. Okay. In the meantime, I'm watching to make sure that my tracking is staying true. Okay, I'm out about 87 inches. That's plenty. I'm going to go ahead and stop and recheck my alignment. Everything seems to be aligned properly. It's not drifting from the wheels. If it's drifting too much, go ahead, re-roll your material, start over, reposition it, and make sure that you try to get it in there as true as possible. All right. Another thing you'll find, when rolls are newer and heavier, they tend to track better. Um, as they, as you get towards the end of the roll, uh, it can shift a little bit back on these actual rollers, so it may take a little more time to actually get it uh, centered and positioned right. Um, from here, I can go ahead and actually, if I had my pattern ready to cut, I can go ahead and just hit cut, and it would cut it. There's no need to scroll it back. Okay, it knows where the actual origin is. All right, so it knows where that start point is. If I wanted to scroll it back, I can. I can go ahead and hit the down arrow and fast, but like I said, it's pretty much redundant um, at this point in time. I could cut my pattern. After my pattern's cut, okay, there's a few different ways that I can actually um, go ahead and cross cut my media. Like I said, the uh, plotter actually has a cross cutting head on it. Um, so if I wanted to, after I'm done, I could go ahead and hit cross cut, one to cut two to cancel, okay? Um, and then it would go ahead and cross cut it. The nice feature about the cross cutter is after it cross cuts, it'll automatically reset your origin or start point, okay? Now, for the people uh, and some of the older plotters don't have the cross cut function, one thing, and I'll scroll this back, is if you're gonna go ahead and manually cut it, okay, 
there's nothing wrong with that, but you do want to make sure that you reset your origin point. If you don't reset your origin point, it still thinks that that material that you had just cut off is still on the actual machine. So say I was done cutting my pattern, I'm going to go ahead and take my blade on the Graftex too. Um, generally, either the older ones have a cutting bar where you'll actually see this uh, groove in between here. You can actually take your blade, drop it in there, and go ahead and cut off your material. All right. From this point, if you're going to manually cut it off, go ahead and the first thing that you want to do is come back over to your screen and hit origin. Okay. When I hit origin, it's going to say new origin point is set. That means that it knows now that's the start point. Okay. So that pretty much rounds it up for a quick introduction, plotter setup, going through conditions. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to give me a call. Um, we are an authorized GraphTech distributor uh, as well as Roland and can help you guide, through, guide uh, any of those other questions that you want. Uh, stay tuned. I will be doing some more advanced settings on the plotter, uh, going through some additional things, uh, additional functions on some uh, next posts. I appreciate it.